me do a quick update on lens compression because uh, there's some people sending me links to some some uh, you know some unicorn fart nonsense, uh, leprechaun and the pixie dust uh, BS on the lens compression. Uh, let's be blunt. Um, <laughs> what people don't understand about lens compression. Um, ever heard the old saying, you, uh, you can't get there from here? Yeah. Um, the stupid things that people are saying about lens compression in some of these videos that, uh, you know, it's as stupid as if you were to say, cancer wouldn't be a problem if you didn't have cancer. It's like, well, how stupid of a statement. I mean, that's basically what these people are saying. They're saying, well, lens compression is only relative to their perspective and the distance you have from your subject. Well, <laughs> A, that is true, but B, I'm going to tell you why that's a pile of nonsense, since we're dealing with photography here. A, when you're in studio, you can't be backing way the hell up. You know, you just can't. Unless you have a studio that the, that's the size of a shopping mall, you know, backing way the hell up is not an option. This is why, even though a 56mm on a DX a crop sensor camera is an equivalent of an 85, a 56 is still a 56, still a 56. It does not show the same facial... Uh, distortion, the good distortion, when you actually make someone that has a horse face look beautiful. You know, when you're talking about taking a headshot to your client, if you actually, <laughs> people don't want the truth, you know, they want it in focus, they want, they want to look as best as possible, and uh, if you don't know how to do that by actually changing your focal length, and actually changing uh, the compression of what it does to their face, then you're doing a disservice because you can take uh, someone that's got an ugly horse face and make them look, you know, pretty damn good. There are tons of examples of this online, but um, <laughs> you know these videos, and I got a couple links to videos today talking about compression, where a guy said, "Well, per, you know, the compression is not real. You know, it's only a matter of distance. Well, you don't have the option to move." And here's another thing where they're wrong. Have you ever seen a, a portrait shot, and it's real, where, you know, someone's got a, a moon over their shoulder that's absolutely enormous? Lens compression. The photographer with a big old lens like this, 300mm, 2.8, 400mm, whatever, 500, they backed way the hell up. And what they've done is they compressed the subject, say the woman that you're taking a shot of, and the moon back here, for example, or a building. And what they've done is, uh, instead of this, it's become like this. And that is beautiful. People love that stuff. And you see what you can't do, no matter how much you change your distance, you can't do that with an 85 millimeter. You can't frame that person the same and get a gigantic moon over someone's shoulder. You can't blur out that building or that the busy street shot. You can't get that same shot. You know, you can't whip out the 85 millimeter. It's like, well, I'm going to try to take a shot that I could get if I backed up 50 yards and took a shot with a 500 millimeter. It doesn't work that way. It, it doesn't work. To say that uh, you know lens compression is only relative uh, to the parallax and uh, the distance that you are from the subject is both factual, but it is also meaningless. That's like saying I can have uh, a one hundred dollar bill in my pocket, and it's exactly the same thing. As remember that Zairean money, where they don't actually count it by uh, uh, the, the 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 face denominator. They actually count it by the pound. You actually pay for stuff by the pound. They don't actually count the money. It's like well. I, you know, a hundred dollar bill is exactly the same thing as, uh, you know, 400 pounds of uh, Zairean money, whatever the, <laughs> whatever that money is that they don't actually count. They, they measure it. And you go to buy like a loaf of bread, you actually put like five pounds of money up on the table and then they actually weigh the money, you know, which is ridiculous, of course. But, you know, that, that is true. The hundred dollar bill is exactly the same thing as the five pounds of money. But you, 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 you know, they're not equivalencies. You can't uh, take an 85 millimeter lens and uh, back the way the hell up and then crop, you know, the ultimate hell out of the shot and make a moon, you know, appear behind someone's shoulder. It does not work. You can't get there from here. So the, the, these, uh, these equivalencies on compression relative to distance to subject, which often can't be moved. I'm taking a shot of someone at the pier. You know, taking a portrait shot of someone leaning against the pier there, and I'm, you know, on the others. Where the hell am I going to move? You know, the, the ocean is over her, over her shoulder, and the ocean is over my shoulder. You know, it doesn't work that way. There's a, you know, literally like six, seven times out of ten, you don't have the option to really change your movement that much. Many times you do, but many, many times you don't. So, lens compression is important because that 85 millimeter lens is not going to do you know, a gigantic moon behind someone's shoulder. You just can't get there from here. 
So these people are half right, but they're completely wrong because they don't understand that the effect that you're trying to go for with that lens compression is important and is directly relative to focal. It's like, well, you can change the distance and make it look the same. Yeah, you, you still can't get there from here. Anyway, thanks for watching. Catch you later.